Welcome to CC Writes. My name is CC Lepke, and today I am bowing down to our robot overlords. I found an AI that, that can generate stories. Um, my plan is to use that to write a short story, whatever the AI comes up with, the next part of the story, I have to continue based on what the AI wrote. Anne Bonnie's vibrant red hair was muted with the grease and grime of the jail cell. Anne leaned against the grime-covered wall of her prison and sang a child's nursery rhyme as her nervous guards looked on. Go on, Anne, said one guard, a man with a thin mustache and round glasses. Sing us a song. Tell her you know who she is. That could play into her hand. You could tell her that. What are you talking about, said the other. She can only be the one who robbed their safe. Aye, aye, said the first. Anne, it's the hangman's noose for you tomorrow. But it hasn't, doesn't have to be that way. It's all right, the man said. I'm right here. I'll protect you. Anne began to sing once more. Both guards shivered and paced away so they could make plans in, pi in private. Anne wouldn't go with them. She didn't need protecting. Live like a dog, die like a dog, she whispered. Is that what you are then, a whipped dog? The lilting voice carried in through the bars of the window and straightened where she sat. I am not a whipped dog. My child is dead. My crewmates are dead and I am tired. You cannot bring her back, whispered Anne. Do you know why you are still alive, Anne? Just lucky that way. A woman's face appeared in the window, grinning mischievously. I am here to make sure that you live on your own terms. Anne let out a deep sigh. You're very young. Wow, that went a weird direction. <laughs> so following along this thread of conversation, that she still did not like being called a goddess just came completely out of nowhere. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that line. Um... Okay, so this is the person who came to visit her. This is Anne. This I could probably pay off, play off as being sarcastic, like saying that she's being whimsical or silly. Okay. So, the prompt that I put in was, young and lively, the girl agreed. Tell me, Anne, do you want to die? Anne looked down at her dirt-streaked hands. She clenched them into fists. No, Anne said at last, I don't want to die. Then come with me, the red-headed woman said, her thick Irish accent turning the words to music. My name is Saoirse. You're to be my new first mate. The AI, in its wisdom, First mate, Anne croaked. Saoirse didn't answer, just raised her eyebrows. She gestured towards the galley. Oh. Anne had been ignored except for when her hand had been on her arm. Anne felt like crying, but there was no reason. Saoirse led Anne down through the huts to a common area. The men were gone, the women still sleeping, and everyone else was gathered around a table. An older woman was plating their food. As Anne approached, she moved her hands like she was washing dishes. Good day. So all of a sudden they're not in jail anymore. <laughs> With a little finagling, I can make that work. So this new prompt, Anne watched the older woman and her new cheerful companion sus suspiciously. This didn't look like any kind of pirate crew that she had ever seen. 
and she had seen many in her years on the sea with Calico Jack. Searsha took her place in a gold chair with red velvet cushions, smiling happily as Anne sized up what she assumed were her new crewmates. So, the AI says... Anne put the deck of cards on the table, shuffled them, and flipped over the first card. I hope you don't mind if I start with a funny one, she said, in the pirate accent she had heard so many times. Oh, it's okay, Searsha replied, although Anne could see her making little frowns at the corners of, of her mouth. I've heard worse. You are a wise woman, Anne said, nodding. I could tell you from experience. You could, Anne said, and I'm sure you could, but we don't have time for... Did I get the formatting? No, no bit did that. It had Anne speak to herself. <laughs> mm. So now they've brought out cards to play. <laughs> So my prompt is, you could, Anne said, and I'm sure you could, but we don't have time for games. Why did you bring me here? You have no ship. This crew looks no better than fishmongers. They might surprise you, Searsha said, green eyes glinting in the candlelight. They'll hold their own. And we've got a ship in mind. That's why I need you, my dear. And let's see what the AI has to say about that. <laughs> oh, we have a new character. Oh no. <laughs> The gates slammed open. Sir Broderick of Gwynedd strode across the courtyard, surrounded by his own troop of musicians and artists. The gauntlet of the host that Sir Gareth had faced earlier in the day barely bothered him. He and his servant shared food with the troop in their rooms before making their way to the king's table. Okay, this is a different part of the story. We can do that. <laughs> I feel like it just kind of ignored me. At the king's table, Cavanaugh, the king's steward, was spread a warm mug of ale before the table. He looked up as the nobleman entered. You gentlemen are late, he said. <laughs> so it was actually a queen during this time period. That's okay. That's something that I can just work around. Let's see. <laughs> I think something fun to do uh, would be to go through and edit this and see if I can turn all of this nonsense into a, an actually cohesive story. Um, right now I am going to make a slight adjustment. So my prompt is, we came as soon as we could, Sir Broderick said, bowing politely to the queen and her steward. Queen Anne nodded solemnly, but said nothing. Well, Cavanaugh asked. He was a young man, but well-bred, and the equal of any soldier in the queen's army. What news do you have, Sir Broderick? Oh no, there's a dragon. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll deal with that too. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a dragon. Apparently this just became a fantasy. <laughs> okay, so here's, here's what the AI came up with. The warriors, Sir Broderick replied, are sending their best to fight the dragon, and they will need all their skill and courage to face him. And what of the children, my lady? Sir Broderick shifted uncomfortably under the queen's intense gaze. Are they safe? Queen Anne shook her head. The prince is with the warriors, she said. The soldiers are still searching for the girl and the girl's parents. They do not expect to find them. Sir Broderick looked deeply disappointed. He glanced at Anne. All right. <laughs> so now we've got a dragon that came into the story. The girl and the girl's parents could be Anne Bonny's new friend, Saoirse, or it could be Anne Bonny herself. I can make that work.
Okay, so my prompt is, he glanced at Anne Stewart, Cavanaugh, and bowed once more. I must beg your pardon, but with the pirate girl still at large, we need all the help we can get to protect the ship. We know it is her next target, and we can't afford to lose more soldiers who are needed to fight the dragon. Will you command the ship, Cavanaugh? Yeah, that should be good. Apparently there's a Captain Myron in the room now. So the AI says, yes, he said, I can barely do that much, however. Very well then, Captain Myron nodded. And Kavanaugh, I will send you and Delia to the mole-strewn beaches this morning. Come out of the wind if you can, but do not go in deeper than your waist. Call out for help if there are more zombies than you can handle. <laughs> oh my goodness, there are zombies now. <laughs> Dra okay, so we're fighting dragons and we're fighting zombies with our, along, along with the pirate that <laughs> is going to steal the ship. Okay. He studied Cavanaugh and Delia. The mole-strewn beaches will be cold, as you have doubtless discovered. You will wear warm clothes, but do not wait until you are nearly frozen. Oh, uh, how am I going to contend with zombies and dragons? <laughs> This was just supposed to be a pirate story. <laughs> oh goodness, I need to think. What can I do with that? All right, so my prompt is, your advice is always wel welcome, Captain, Kavanaugh said with a courtly bow. I'm certain Sergeant Delia and I will fare well against the zombie hordes. How long until the ship reaches us and we can disembark? Captain Myron looked to Sir Broderick, who nodded. Noon tomorrow, should the wind be in our favor. So then the AI says, Yes, Your Excellency, Kavanaugh replied. Shall we fire up the loading bays and embark the, embark the zombies? <laughs> How do you em embark a zombie? The others looked skeptical, but Myron nodded, his assent, and Kavanaugh again raised his glass. To our unwavering allies, he toasted. The others raised their glasses and downed their drinks. To our enemies, Kavanaugh said as he lifted his glass, may the stench of their rotting corpse infest their nostrils for the rest of eternity. That is a funny thing to say about zombies. <laughs> the sounds of clinking and clanking came from the bays. I don't know what a bay is. I guess I'll have to look that up. Is it just the the body of water? The way it used it, it sounded like it was like a construction of some sort, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, because it says loading bays. A loading dock. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start a new section, because I think that's a good enough scene to end it there. And then I want to go back to the original scene, uh, go back to Anne and, and Saoirse to see what they're up to and get this thing back on track. <laughs> So my prompt is, Anne fidgeted in the lady's dress that Saoirse had found for her. Are we really going to steal a commuter vessel? It's hardly a good fit for pirates. Aye, Saoirse said. She didn't fidget. Saoirse looked like a proper lady with her face done up and fine makeup to accentuate her full lips and dancing green eyes. She cleaned up well for a pirate. Let's see what we can get out of that. What if someone sees us, Anne said, even once. Oh, here we go. <laughs> no, it says, she was used to being spoiled. What if someone sees us, Anne said, even once. We'll take a boat back to the mainland and run for it again, Saoirse said. Run? We'll want to make sure they find me. It was a good plan so far as the seas. <laughs> oh no, there are fairies. <laughs> it was a good plan so far as the Seelie courts went. The chief myth of the free seas was that of the shadow child, which had shaped the seas around the continent. The child was believed to have hatched out of a secret fairy pool, 
formed by the ma magic of a fairy queen and the sorcery of an... <laughs> it just, it wants me to have all of the magic creatures in this story all at once. <laughs> well then. Oh, what am I gonna do with this? <laughs> okay, so... Now we have something called the Shadow Child. That can be something maybe they're trying to go after later on in the story, and that's why they need the ship. So what formed the Shadow Child? Magic of the Fairy Queen and the Sorcery of an Embittered Witch. Sure. That's what it was. <laughs> no, we'll say Ancient Humans. It doesn't have to be an article. <laughs> So this prompt is, to steal the shadow child, Saoirse needed a ship, a much better one than the commuter vessel they planned to steal. Anne grumbled, feeling lost. The younger woman was an enigma, and she wasn't entirely certain that Saoirse was sane. But Anne had a life debt to pay, and playing the first mate to a mad pirate was better than hanging from the gallows. Okay, so here's what the AI has to say. So she did her best to play along and keep an eye on Saoirse. The sun started to rise. By then, Knight's crew would have left, so they started stripping the ship. She found boxes full of glowing stones and some of the thieved things. It took a couple of hours, but she finally made it to a locked chest and finally found her long-lost brother. She had saved him from those hours of hell, the horrible moments where he was re-educated and now they could go out together. Saoirse pushed him back. Okay. <laughs> oh goodness, wow. So Saoirse, the young female pirate captain, boarded a ship and to find her brother who was re-educated. Oh man, what am I gonna do with that? <laughs> I might have to end this on a cliffhanger. <laughs> Okay, last one. So my prompt is Saoirse pushed him back into the treasure chest. It's dark in there, he whimpered. I know, Liam, but we're not free yet. My crew will smuggle you ashore. Anne and I will stay aboard. I need you to be ready for what's to come. Can you do that? He hesitated, but Saoirse held his eyes steadily. Finally, her brother nodded. I can, he whispered. So this is what the AI came up with to continue that. Anne sighed in relief. She left Liam on the deck and taking Saoirse's hand, she stepped through the bars and out into the night. On their journey, Liam met several of her companions, like Sol Karn, a veteran of the Iron War and captain of a boat called the Trotter. He brought her the news that Port McGann is already occupied by Tartar raids. Anne and Anuis Kreebel, the commander of the town's defenses, are getting old. Their ranks are thinning and they don't have the courage to. <laughs> oh goodness. So it did a story break, <laughs> which I was not expecting at all. My goodness. I'm, I'm gonna have to leave it there for for now, but I will continue, I will continue this AI story later. Thanks for joining me today on CC Writes. I really hope you enjoyed our time together. If you can't possibly wait for any more from me, then you should consider following me on Twitter and Twitch. There will be links in the description below, and I will see you later.